Welcome to our tour of Final Cut Pro 10.4. We created this 10 lesson series to help you understand the new features and how to get the most out of them. In lessons one through four, I'll walk you through some of the important new 360 video editing tools. And in lessons five through 10, Mark will show you some of the advanced color correction tools in Final Cut Pro 10. So let's begin with the world of 360 video editing. Before I get into the specifics of working with 360 content in Final Cut Pro 10.4, Let's take a look at some of the key enhancements in the user interface that make 360 editing simple, elegant, and fun. Here I have an event with some 360 clips I've imported into the browser. A new badge in the upper corner lets us know these are distinctly 360 clips. By the way, I've included a link to some 360 media below if you'd like to try out these new 360 editing features. Skimming over the thumbnail reveals a distorted looking clip in the viewer. This is because the video files recorded by 360 cameras are typically stitched together into a flat 2x1 rectangle called an equirectangular projection. It's basically a highfalutin name for a 2D map that will be projected onto a sphere. In order to view the projection spherically the way your audience will see it, go to the View menu and choose 360 Degree Viewer. Then click and drag to have a look around. Use this slider to widen or narrow the field of view. I'll set this to 100 degrees. I'll select another clip, then press the space bar to begin playback. Then take another look around the viewer. Because of Mac OS High Sierra's new graphics architecture, Felica Pro 10 is able to process this data in real time. And here's where it gets really interesting. If you own an HTC Vive headset, you can select Output to VR Headset from the View menu, and the video will be piped directly to the headset for a truly immersive VR experience. If you're working with a client or other creatives in the room, choosing Mirror VR Headset will allow you to see exactly what they're seeing in the 360 viewer. To create a 360 degree project from your imported media, press Command N. I'll name the project Places to Visit in Arizona and press Return. I'll select this Watson Lake clip in the browser and press E to edit the clip into the timeline. To view the project properties in the inspector, press Command J. Funnel Cut Pro automatically conforms the project to match the equirectangular resolution of the clip and flags it as a 360 degree project. A small but useful new feature is the ability to add clips to your timeline in a specific order. With the Command key held down, I'll select the Ripple Ranch clip, then the Height 707 clip then the H5 hanger clip and press E. Skimming over these clips in the timeline, you can see they're in the order I selected them. You can edit 360 clips like any other clip in Funnel Cut Pro 10. Here I'm trimming the head and tail of the Watson Lake clip to remove the unwanted material. Then I'll trim the head of the incoming shot of Jill and add a cross dissolve. I'll play over the transition to see how it looks off of the Aura 4i. The edit seems to work nicely, but I'm not sure my viewers will know where they should be looking. Parking the playhead over the first clip reveals an empty lake in the 360 viewer, but this is not where I want my viewers to be focused initially. In the lower left of the 360 viewer, click the transform pop-up and choose reorient. Move your pointer of the viewer, then hold the shift key and drag to pan the sphere around its Y axis. The sphere is shifted horizontally so the viewer will now be oriented toward the main subject, the dude in the green kayak. One other issue to be addressed is the horizon. If you look at the shoreline behind him, it does not appear level. From the view menu choose Show Horizon. Yellow guides appear over the image in the viewer. Placing the pointer in the upper right quadrant, I'll drag downward until the scene is leveled. To view your location coordinates relative to your starting orientation, choose Show Overlays from the Settings menu. These numbers are useful for noting where in the sphere a particular subject or action is located. I'll drag around the viewer to take another look at the entire scene. At roughly 150 degrees west, you can see my two editors, Spencer and Travis, sitting under a tree. To return to your starting orientation, choose Reset Angle from the Settings menu. Once you're happy with the orientation of your 360 clip, you can save the coordinates as an effect preset. This would be useful if, for example, you needed to correct the orientation of other clips that were shot with the same camera setup. Click the Save Effect Preset button. 
I'll select the 360 category and name it Watson Lake. Scrolling toward the bottom of the window, you can see that Reorient is checked automatically. Click Save. In the inspector, I'll reset the Reorient controls to their defaults, open the Effects Browser, select the 360 category, then locate the effect I just saved. I'll drag it on top of the clip in the timeline, and instantly the clip is reoriented to my saved coordinates. Very cool. If you're interested in going further in your understanding of these new 360 editing tools, check out my 360 video editing course at rippletraining.com. It's available for streaming or download, and it includes the media for following along.